live. <laughs> awesome. Well, it's 1030. Let's let's get started. Um, we'll hopefully see some more eyeballs in here. If not, we can just have a great conversation and I get to learn more about you. So awesome. Cool. Um, first off, can you just tell me your background, your story, where you grew up? Um, what do you like to do as a kid? Sure. So I'm originally from Eden Prairie, Minnesota. I did my whole kindergarten through 12th grade, 12th grade education in that school system. Uh, growing up, I guess I was always sort of like as a kid that like read a lot, um, particularly like educational books. Um, so I have like a huge collection of those kind of books at my parents' house that actually we probably should be donating to. Neither me or my brother use them that much anymore, but yeah, I did my uh, K through 12 education in Eden Prairie, Minnesota, came to the University of Minnesota, and um, now I'm pursuing a degree in chemical engineering. That's amazing. I think I mentioned it to you, but my sister um, did the chemical engineering program at the U, and I have so much respect for anyone who does that program. Um, yeah, it's, it's no easy task. <laughs> Cool. Okay. So you have always been into kind of learning, education, just, yeah, learning new things. How did that kind of translate into Jeopardy? Like, how were you first introduced to that of like, this is something I could pursue? Yeah. So one like super popular activity, like throughout the country at the high school and college level is this thing called Quiz Bowl. Um, it's sort of a trivia, like answering questions kind of thing where, um, you have like teams of four and uh you're like you have questions that are read to you and you have to buzz in and give the answer um so that was something that i did actually starting in eighth grade and uh, did throughout high school and i'm part of the quiz bowl club at the u of m as well um so that's something that's been part of my life for a while and a lot of people who did quiz bowl in you know their high school or college years do end up going on to jeopardy just because of, like the skill set and the knowledge set is like very similar um so the first time i actually saw try out for jeopardy was during my senior year of high school um i didn't actually end up taking the online test that year because um i think it was scheduled at the same time that i had a band concert at my high school so i couldn't <laughs> do it no but, um, <laughs> Anyway, that's how um, I sort of got into the world of Jeopardy. Okay, so Quiz Bowl was kind of the gateway that brought you into the world. Um, what what was your specialty for Quiz Bowl? So I did like mostly science stuff, nominally science, although a little bit of everything definitely helps, um, mm -hmm. especially, you know, when you go on like Jeopardy, for example, it's not a team thing it's a one-on-one -on, -one, on one sort of thing so you have to have knowledge in a lot of different areas right that makes sense that's cool it's funny um my my little cousin um his name is urbis he's actually not little anymore he's gonna be a freshman at the u this year and he did um quiz bowl for irondale high school and i, I think I, I must have played against him in high school probably oh, urbis, <laughs> Yeah, you uh, must probably. have. <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah, I'll have to let him know. Like, talk to Nabir for all things Quiz Bowl at U of M. Um, I'll, yeah, I'll follow up on that. But that's super cool. So you you chose to apply to Jeopardy. It's not like you were scouted and then that's not how that works, really. Yeah, exactly. Like, anyone can go on to the Jeopardy website and take the online test. Got and it. then from there, it's a matter of, if you get a passing score on the test, then you might get selected to do an interview. And then from there, um, it's a matter of just waiting to see if you get that phone call to, for like, for them to tell you, Hey, uh, we want you on the show. We want you to fly out to LA, et cetera. Wow. That is cool. So anyone on the, anyone listening, that's the process, the online test, and then you wait for the call. Um, okay. Really interesting. And then can you tell me more about how, the so you were accepted they gave you that call they're like we want you to fly to la what was um like the process of the competition itself um yeah just walk me through that whole experience yeah so they brought um 15 of us 
us college students and one alternate out to LA. And um, so during the first day of filming, they had us uh, do like five different episodes. So like five groups of three of us doing like quarterfinal rounds. And then from those 15 people, nine of us moved on to the second day, filmed three semifinal episodes in the morning, and then the winners of each of those semifinal episodes in the morning uh, got to play in the two finals episodes in the afternoon of that second day. So basically we filmed two weeks worth of shows in two days. I did not realize it was just a two day thing. That is insane. And you have to be, did you even have a practice for um, like before it was televised or before it was brought or recorded? Or was it immediately like you go onto the stage and they're recording everything you do? We got a little bit of practice just getting the hang of like the buzzers and like the flow of the game uh, before they started filming, before they brought the audience into the studio, just so that we could get like a little bit comfortable. But I remember um, on the first day of filming, my episode was the last one of the five that they filmed. So at that point, um, Tyler and Natalie and I, so we were the three contestants who were in that episode together. Uh, we were just kind of tired because we had been like sitting around all day just waiting for our turn. So it, it was like a little bit of a different experience. For me, it was like not as much nerves as like, okay, let's get this over with. Right. Like we've been here sitting all day. Did you at least get to listen to the other people or is it all kind of private in that way on the first day we didn't get to watch the other episodes that they filmed um because of the way the competition is set up is like you can know how much to bet if you watch the other episodes first um just because of the structure of the competition but on the second day i got to watch the episodes that i was not involved with so that was that was fun to just sit in the audience there and, you know, watch my friends. That is super fun. Do you, whenever you watch Jeopardy and like in this circumstance too, I, I'm, this happens to me where I, I think of the answer. Do you ever do that of like, oh, I knew that like before? Well, yeah, of course. When you're, <laughs> my, my personal opinion is when you're watching Jeopardy at home, you have to like shout out the right answer you have to. whenever you know it. Yeah, <laughs> that's the uh, right way to watch. Right, that's the fun. Yeah, fun of it. You can participate at home and try to you know beat mm -hmm. the people participating. Super cool. Wow, I did not realize it was such a whirlwind experience. Did you get to bring anyone? Like, was anyone from your your family or fan club in the audience there? Yeah, so my parents and my younger brother flew out to L.A. Um, they had to pay for their own tickets, but um, they were able to get, like, um, tickets into the studio um, to watch the shows as they were being recorded. So uh, it was great having them there. And then, obviously, after I won, we were able to go out for dinner and celebrate and stuff. Wow, what an experience. I'm sure your family was just so proud. Like, that's incredible. Cool. Um, let's see. What else do I have? Oh, I have a question. This is, um, I like this question. What was your favorite question or what were you most proud to answer when you were on stage, middle of your Jeopardy competition? Um, oh my gosh, there are a lot of individual questions that I was like proud to get the response of. There was one category um, called poetry and physicists. Uh, I think it was like the my last episode that I filmed there, and um, the whole idea was that like, yeah, it's it was pretty self-explanatory, I guess, poetry and physicist. Um, and I ended up getting all five questions in that category, and one of them was a daily double, and I risked a lot of money on that wow. question as well. So I was, you know, like I said. It, a little bit ago, I was the main science person for my high school quiz bowl team, so it was nice to be able to uh, get those science questions, although I guess this was more of a mix of, like, you know, poetry, so, like, literature and science, but uh, right. having knowledge in both those areas. Yeah, that's amazing, being, like, you know, science is my thing, but also I know all, all these ones, too. Like, that's incredible if you were able to pull that out when you needed to. And the daily double, it's just icing on the cake <laughs> yeah 
Awesome. Um, cool. Well, we have a few people listening. If you have any questions for Nabir, please type them in the chat Just to share your audio and video and you can join in the conversation and ask your questions. Um, get to know Jeopardy College legend um, and current U of M student, sophomore chemical and but I'll just keep asking you questions too. Um, what was something, so this was obviously a very quick process where you were, you know, physically there. I'm sure it was a whirlwind. Suddenly you're the winner of College Jeopardy. What, what is something you learned during that experience that you didn't expect? All of the people who worked on set, um, you know, all of the like producers and uh, contestant coordinators and technicians that were on the Jeopardy set were just such like outgoing and nice people, like really fun to work with. And that's something that I guess makes sense in hindsight, but I was really surprised by that when I got there, how like nice everyone was. And that really made, um, you know, going to the set that you've like only ever seen on TV and like it can feel like, you know, maybe a little bit nerve wracking at first or like really surreal. Um, it made that a lot more comfortable. That's amazing. Yeah, I'm sure that makes a world of a difference. If you feel, you know, like, okay, these people are people are welcoming, they're gonna help me, you know, with this, like, you're able to perform so much better and like, relax a bit, even in that high pressure situation. That's amazing yeah, to hear. And you never know with LA, you kind of hear like, Oh, I don't, I don't know the stereotype, but that's awesome. They were just really kind to you. <laughs> yeah, I had a number of like great conversations with Uber drivers when I was in LA. Like just when I remember talking to my Uber driver when I got off the plane um, at LAX and I was like um, going to the hotel and talking to my Uber driver about his story and how he came to LA. I think uh, I asked him like, like why you decide to come here and he said you know i was living out in boston and my life was just it was boring i didn't i didn't feel like doing anything so i just dropped everything and took my car and drove for a week across the whole country saw a bunch of cities and sites along the way and uh he made his way out to la and uh that's where he'd been living for um you know for i think a year at that point Oh my goodness. Wow. What a, what a special place. I've never been to LA myself. Do you have, was that your first time there or had you been there before? I had technically been there before. My parents had brought me as a kid, but not anything that I would remember. So this right. is my first time like being there that uh, mm -hmm. I could remember. Although I didn't get much time to do any of like the touristy things there because I was spending most of the time right. um, on set. Right. That makes sense. Did you, so what was your um, celebratory dinner spot that you picked after you won? Um, so I actually, on, after the first day of filming, uh, after I'd made it to the second day, uh, my parents and I picked this, uh, I think it was like a Jewish Italian, um, like pasta restaurant. And that was actually really good. Um, and then on the second day, uh, the people at Jeopardy actually had planned like a sort of banquet or dinner kind of thing for all of us, like contestants and family. And also one of the producers, Maggie Speak at Jeopardy was retiring that week. So it, it was also a celebratory dinner for her as well. So um, just a nice little uh, way to end uh, at least our time filming those particular episodes and also um, say goodbye to Maggie. Right. Wow. What a party celebration. So many good things all wrapped into one. That's incredible. Yeah. Huh. Any other, um, I want to, I want to transition now into your life kind of after the event. Um, but any other things about, um, oh, Peter Schultz, has a question for us. Let's add him to the screen. <laughs> Hi, Peter. How's it going? It's going great. We're just, we have Nabir, Nabir here, college Jeopardy champion. Do you have a question for him? I do. Yeah. First off, thanks for uh, sharing your story. Um, I have, I guess, two questions. Number one is, 
Um, like, did anything change after winning College Jeopardy, um, like, just in your life? And number two is, like, what did you do with the $100,000? <laughs> a question! <laughs> okay, so I guess first thing is, so my episodes aired in April, which was, like, right at the height of nothing was happening, nobody was leaving their house, right? So immediately, my day-to-day -day life did not change. Um, I was actually, at that point, I was the only one of me and uh, my four roommates that was living at my apartment because all my roommates went back to their parents' place. So I was just there, the only person in a four-bedroom apartment, just watching the episodes by myself. And it was kind of like a strange experience because it's like, what would this have been like to be in person, right? But anyway, it was still fun. I was able to have watch parties over Zoom with a lot of my friends. Um, and since then, I guess, sometimes I get recognized when walking around campus and doing things. Um, I do find that it happens more often when I'm like with other people, like with one of my friends or roommates. I think that's probably down to when, usually when I'm walking around by myself, I have headphones in and people don't like to like approach like, like, is that someone I saw on TV? Oh, but he has headphones in, so I don't want to bother him. So I guess uh, that's probably the reason behind that. But yeah, I do get recognized sometimes in person. Uh, so that's always fun. Um, and I guess with what I did with the $100,000, right now, most of it is sitting in like um, like mutual funds and stocks and other sort of investments. Nice. Making it last versus like blowing it on a new <laughs> car or something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah, at least nowadays, I don't have as much of like, a tight budget while shopping so that's that's how it sort of splurge it's not like one big thing it's just like little things that like i spend a little bit more than i would have before right like you can get like guacamole on your chipotle burrito or something <laughs> like that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's awesome peter do you have any other questions for nabir those are my big ones yeah thanks again <laughs> for sharing awesome great to hear from you peter yep. yeah thanks for tuning in peter um yeah no i think that's really cool i mean i'm not surprised that you're recognized on campus and people like i know i um i if i saw you on campus i'd be like oh you're a legend like you put university of minnesota on a map so that's really cool that you're being reached out to like that <laughs> yeah it's also i guess the thing is like wearing a mask out in public as well it's kind of hard to recognize people from just like the top half of their face as well Right. But, Actually, yeah, the world is so different <laughs> where it's really hard to even recognize a good friend like walking around. So, yeah. <laughs> cool. OK, well, I also want to ask you're currently studying chemical engineering. This is your sophomore year, correct? This is my junior year. Junior year. OK, so you were a sophomore when you participated last year. OK, junior year. Oh, wow. Isn't this supposedly the toughest year? Yeah, I guess for us. <laughs> at the U of M we have it set up where junior spring and senior fall are sort of the really tough ones so okay. uh this semester is actually I'd consider it my easy one I actually don't have any classes on Monday Wednesday or Friday uh apart from marching band Woohoo! So that's I incredible have that nice set up but I'm fully prepared to you know in the spring have to like put my head down and really uh focus on that engineering stuff right cool that's good you can at least you know ease into it this fall and then kind of gear up into the spring and next fall time um i'd love to know how how has your college experience been changed because of the pandemic um i know you mentioned you're part of marching band as well like would love to hear how that's changed um what has your experience been with with the pandemic yeah, so I guess in general, it's the online classes sort of thing. Um, my only technical in-person class is marching band, but the way that that is set up this fall is that we're online for the first two weeks of school. So this being our second week of school, but we're going to start meeting in person in smaller groups only outside starting next Monday. And of course, with no football, we're not performing at football games. So 
we're going to be over at the football stadium and they'll video record our like halftime shows and post them on the internet. Super cool. I didn't realize we could still watch you. I, yeah, I didn't know the process for that. So that's awesome. We're still going to get our marching band fixed this fall. <laughs> yeah. Cool. And, and go ahead. Keep going. Oh, I was just going to say that um, it's nice to have, at least for me, even though, you know, it there is dangers involved, I do miss, like, seeing my friends from band in person as well. We have been having stuff over Zoom, but, um, you know, even with, like, socially distanced, like, staying six feet apart and stuff like that, it's going to be, it's something that I'm looking forward to. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard when, I mean... Like you even mentioned, just not being able to have a viewing party with your friends like this that spring, like it's it's hard to not be with your community. So that's good. You'll you'll get that soon. And even if yeah. it's in smaller groups, mm -hmm. that's good. Um, and what instrument did you play again? Trumpet? I play clarinet. Clarinet. Oh, I don't think I knew that. That's super cool. Um. Did you start that? That's amazing. I can't believe you had time for quiz bowl and band and everything else you probably do. <laughs> yeah, I I'm I like to stay busy. I know a lot of my friends um, talk about like in high school, you're doing all these activities to get it on your like college application resume. So mm -hmm. and then once you're in college, you just pick the few things that you really enjoy or are going to be like resume builders for entry level jobs. But right. for me, I feel like I've been even busier in college than I have in high school just because there's so many things that I like doing. Yeah, that's the beauty, especially of the U of M, but I think most colleges is, is what you make it. And there's so many opportunities that you can pursue and do. So that's cool. Even if it's busy, even if it's maybe stressful sometimes, you're you're making the most of it. So that's really cool. Yeah. And you, I mean, you mentioned a little bit of, um, you know, building up your resume for potential after post-college. What do you kind of see yourself doing? Um, I feel like you have so much going for you. The Jeopardy stamp, amazing degree. What What do you want to want to pursue after school? Um, so after getting my bachelor's, I'm looking to go directly into industry as opposed to like getting some sort of graduate degree. Um, probably either as like a process engineer, so working with those like manufacturing processes involving like chemicals or food or really in any number of things in the world of manufacturing, okay. or as an R and D engineer and working um yeah on that research and development side. That's super cool. Are you? Do you have any um kind of passions of what you would want to be like? What company or like? potentially what types of products you'd be excited about? Yeah, I mean, this past summer, I did a co-op at um, a company nearby that's in the like water treatment, water filtration uh, industry. Um, but I'm looking at companies in a number of different areas, whether that be energy or food mm -hmm. or water. Um, so if, there's a lot of options that I am looking forward to exploring yeah. during the rest of my college years and the rest of my career. Yeah, that's that it is. You can do so many different things. You did one internship with water, but maybe you'll like energy. So that's cool, keeping your, your options open and seeing what you like best. If you do go the water route, my sister who graduated from the U chemical engineering, she works in wastewater treatment. Um, so she mm. builds or she designs wastewater treatment um, facilities for companies. So let me know if you want to meet with her and talk about water. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, awesome. Well, I guess um, I have one more kind of final question, but what advice do you have for anyone listening? Um, it could be about Jeopardy. It could just be about, you know, your your um, findings from this point in your life. What what advice do you have for viewers? I'd say um, just make sure that you really enjoy what you're doing. And I think that applies to a lot of people in, like, a lot of stages of life. Um, not just people who are, like, still in high school or still in college. But um, I that's something that I'm constantly 
you know, questioning myself, do I really enjoy what I'm doing? Am I passionate about it? And um, I think that's, that needs to be top of, you know, your priorities. You can't prioritize something else over that. If you're not enjoying what you're doing, that, that, then that's not a good situation to be in. And um, one, I, one thing I'm really grateful for is that like the U of M has this awesome like chemical engineering program. And it's something that I do enjoy. And it's something that I can make a career out of. And, um, and even with stuff outside of my career, stuff like Jeopardy, it's something that I can like pursue and, uh, you know, have fun with. So um, definitely, I'd say, yeah, make sure you enjoy what you're doing. I think that's such good advice to really reflect on, you know, what am I doing? Like, time is so valuable. And what you put your time into ends up being your life. So making sure you're having fun along the way is so important. Um, and especially to make it if you enjoy what you're doing, then it's, it's not, it's, it's sustainable where you're actually like, you know, feeling energized by it. And um, yeah, I just think that's really good advice for everyone. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. Cool. Okay. I want to just end um, before, if we have any other final questions, I thought we would do a lightning round of questions, just fun questions. Um, okay. So I'm going to fire questions at you you'll this should be you should be familiar with this like quick quick question answer type thing so here we go lightning round of questions what is your favorite color red what is your favorite food mac and cheese amazing college college student response yeah <laughs> what is your favorite season uh summer goodbye summer what is your favorite song Oh my gosh. Um, oh, there's so many songs. Can I just pick one? Just right pick now, one. Uh, Ricky by Denzel Curry. Ooh, I'm going to put that on my list. Awesome. Ricky by Denzel Curry. Okay, those are my lightning round of questions. Thank you so much. You passed. You knew all the right answers. <laughs> awesome. Well, Peter Schultz said, thanks again for sharing. Can I open it up? Anyone else want to ask Nabir a question before he, we let him loose and go back? To, you probably have class after this, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what class do you have? Uh, Fundamentals of Management with Alan Fine. Oh, going into the business school. Yeah, this is my first uh, class in the Carlson School that I've taken. So, oh, cool. you know, this is, what, this is my little foray into that world. Yeah, that's awesome. That's where I graduated from. So hopefully you enjoy it. Cool. Well, um, I think that's a wrap. I can't thank you enough for your time being a part of Twin City Startup Week and kind of being a celebrity appearance for our, our ed tech track. Um, and yeah, let me know if you want to get connected with Lindsay about water. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Sweet. Okay, well, thanks, Sabir. Have a great rest of your day. All right, thanks. Bye.